Center uh, in San Jose. Tickets are selling fast. Get yours now at Ticketmaster.com. Saskia, we were texting yesterday, and I'm just, the sports weekend is just phenomenal. You start off with college football. You know, first, you got the Niners and Seahawks Thursday night football. You get college football Friday and Saturday. You got some great games. LSU coming back in overtime against Ole Miss. Ohio State, Oregon lived up to the hype. That was phenomenal. Alabama almost loses in the morning to South Carolina. The 12 30 games are all oh, Pitt State, USC. This is a great uniform game. And USC blowing another one. Lincoln Riley, what was that clock management? What was that clock management at the end of regulation for Lincoln Riley? Then you got the baseball playoffs. Padres choke. Dodgers go 30 street, 33 straight innings, which tied a major league record uh, for shutout innings. I mean, it was unbelievable what the Dodgers have done. And then they lose yesterday to the Mets in game two. So now that series is 1-1. The Yankees go up 1-0. Stanton hits a bomb yesterday. I mean, sports are sportsing. Sports have been awesome. Where do you think Farhan was watching Alex Cobb versus Carlos Rodon? Was he even watching? Does he even watch? I don't even know if he watches. Carlos Rodon, that's what a power lefty arm looks like. I don't, I don't even know if he watches. I don't know if he watches. Most swing and misses ever. From a starter in a Yankee playoff game, that's it's kind pretty, of incredible. That is incredible. I mean, it really is. Now, the, the deal with him has always been injuries. But when he's healthy, I mean, that guy's explosive. I wanted to sign him. I knew it was a huge risk. I understood all of it. Like, the guy could blow up at any moment. When he's on, and I know everyone, Blake Snell. Blake Snell's awesome. They're, they're right. both really good. Rodon is as good as it gets as a power lefty as anyone I've ever seen. Yep. He's no, ridiculous. No doubt he When is. he's on. No doubt he is. Well, Farhan probably had a front row seat because it was... Not only Rodon and Kyle pitching, but Sean Manion was on the mound for the New York Mets, and he's having one hell of a postseason. Did you see what he what he was talking afterwards? And he was talking about how, you know, everyone's caught up in data. I started watching Chris Sale the other day, and he was talking about how he throws, mm-hmm. and Chris Sale slings it. He goes, so I just started messing around with, with slinging it. Yeah, put that in your data pipe and smoke it. That's called scouting. It's called old school messing around with pitches, messing around with arm angles. You, you do that by bullpenning, by doing old school stuff, not by looking at spreadsheets. <laughs> so shout out Sean Manaya. Yeah, Sean Manaya, Carlos Rodon, and Alex Cobb, three former Giants pitching yesterday. Mets even up the series at one game apiece. That's a classic series. And as long as the Yankees get in, Major League Baseball can't lose with the World Series matchup. As long as the Yankees win, they're going to get either New York, L.A., a classic Dodger, Yankee uniform, late 70s, early 80s, and 81 when they met in the World Series. And they met, of course, a couple times in the 70s. Or you get a Subway Series, which is going to do numbers out there in New York City and across the country. So uh, Major League Baseball is winning this postseason. It's been riveting stuff here. But I want to get back to football. And I want to get to the Dallas Cowboys before we get to Baldy. Because the Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> I don't know if they're making the playoffs, to be honest with you. I don't think highly of their scheme. I don't think highly of their personnel. I don't think highly of their quarterback. I don't think highly of their running game. I don't think highly of their owner. Now, their owner joins our boys, RJ and Sean, every single week. RJ and Bobby Belt and Sean, a 105-3 to fan in Dallas. And maybe we'll do a simulcast again next week. We'll play nice with them. We'll play nice. We won't bite. I promise you. We won't bite. But they get Jerry Jones on every single week. And, you know, today had to be a doozy. Jerry Jones in his box watching his Cowboys get embarrassed on his 82nd birthday. Oh, it's rich. It's sweet. You know what's painful? Worst home loss of the Jerry Jones era. Hey, well, it could happen to a better person. That's crazy. Well, if you want to hear how spicy Jerry is today, listen to this back and forth. Now, let me cut it. There's a couple questions. And just listen to the build up here. Here's Jerry Jones this morning on 105 through the fan. Check this out, folks. Jerry, I think the counter back when you said, where are you going to get the players? You can't get them this week is, and you, you're aware of, of all the off season topics. You, yeah, but what is your counter? What is your my, damn counter? My counter I is. I really want to know where you would go, or go get it. Now don't tell me about should got the guy in the off season. Why not? This isn't a damn word argument just because I'm not arguing with you. I'm dealing with how we line up against San Francisco. Not what I did wrong last week or last month or two months ago or two years ago. If I really gave you guys a list of all the things I've done wrong over the last few years, uh, you couldn't be on this program for the next five years steady and go over it. But every now and then you do some right things, and at the end of the day you add it up, and the rights give you a better spot than the wrongs. 
But if you think for any minute right now, there'll be one Super Bowl champion. What do the others do wrong? There's one Super Bowl champion. Now, we want to be that champion. And I'm sure not throwing the towel in today because of what happened out there Sunday. But I'm not going to sit here and waste a lot of energy, a lot of time. Uh, let's talk about what I should have done back in 1907 or 19, <laughs> 2017. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I've got more time than that, and I actually don't even have time on this great show for looking back at decisions. So that's just part one, huh? That's just part one. It gets I love better. It. Who did he check? Was that RJ or Sean? That that was. Uh, hey, I think that was that radio that, voice guy. I think that was Sean. I think that was Sean. Yeah, the show today's got a good voice. No, I know Sean. That was Sean. Not spelled S H A N. It's Sean S H A N. Spelled like you know Shane without the E, but S H A N. They, I mean, it's, that's Sean and RJ. All right, more on Jerry Jones on the show. <laughs> Okay, so, Jerry, 1970, a little different from this past offseason in building the team we're talking about today, which there was a lot of criticism that you guys didn't add, didn't spend, and don't add, and don't spend, and are not aggressive enough with some of the problems that are still haunting the Cowboys today that we see play out on the field. That That's the point of talking oh, about the offseason. Oh, oh, I remember those criticisms very well. Okay, so what? Or are they playing out so to be accurate? What's your, what's your point? What's your point? My my point is, it seems like point? my point. Let me tell you what I'll do. Let me tell you what I'll do about it. Uh, I will uh, uh, let us sit down and look at the decisions we've made over the last several years. Okay, I'll look at it now. If you think I'm interested on a on a damn phone call with you over a radio. <laughs> And sitting here and throwing all the good out with the dishwater, you have got to be smoking something over there this morning. <laughs> I'm not. And I really don't, and I don't even want our listeners to listen to me, uh, to talk about this is not your job. Your job isn't to let me go over all the reasons that I did something, and I'm sorry that I did it. That's not your job. That's not your job. This is not your job to ask this question. I love that. Our station. Does, is, Our he, station. is he one of the new owners is, of yeah, Odyssey? Is he on the board at Odyssey? He might be. <laughs> hey, he's I'll on the board this, at Odyssey. If Jerry Jones was an owner at Odyssey, we might be turning a profit soon. Because oh, oh, here's the thing he's with Jerry. He's a good businessman. Here's the thing with Jerry. Here's the thing with Jerry, Pete. We can argue about like him being the GM is ridiculous, right? We, we all agree. Like Running the actual football team. I was about the X's and O's, this, the, the, the 53-man roster. That's absurd. Mm-hmm. As a businessman, it's really difficult for him to see his flaws. Many years ago, I was trying to sell food to a restaurant, and this restaurant owned five or six locations. And the guy says to me, he goes, hey, young man, let me ask oh, you there's something. More? There's more? Oh, yeah, more. no, there, there's one more. So that was the first two clips that set it up. Right, well, this is the whole, day. What are this is the, whole this is the, the money one right here. All right, geez. How much were the birthday plans affected Sunday night? Well, of course, uh, it's um, uh, asking too much uh, to uh, uh, get more than probably is realistic, but I had visions of sugar plums. <laughs> I really never thought that we couldn't uh, move the ball on those guys, and uh, that was quite, a, quite an eye-opener. But uh, let me tell you this. I've had a lot of birthdays, and uh, <laughs> but more than that, I've had uh, many a great days, and uh, every time you have one of those, it'll take care of about a half a year's worth of bad days. And so uh, I know this, the next time we have a win, which I hope it's two weeks from now, we're going to celebrate on this deal because those are hard to come by. Jim. When we get on the show Monday morning, I'm going to do some <laughs> yucking it up because uh, uh, this just reminds you there's no giving when you walk out there. He's he's sounding he's sounding older and older and older, and look, the guy's slowing down. He's eighty two years old. He's had a hell of a life when it comes to business. I don't think the person. I don't think much of him. Uh, that's just me. But I've I've said this for a long, long time. As long as he's running that team, they're not going to win anything. They're farther away from the Super Bowl than they've been in the last decade. And with that stuff, he can't even take accountability for the lack of all season activity. And what's going on there? You paid the quarterback who. Does it look like a game changer? 
When things go awry for the Dallas Cowboys, boy, it goes awry. It, the train goes off the track. They've been flying out three times at home. But this is this is the part where I, I was trying to make this point before we played the the, the audio there. There was like, I, I said to a guy who owned five, six restaurants, I was like, hey, look, let me sell you X, Y, and Z. You know what he said to me? I'm wildly profitable doing what I'm doing right now. Who are you to tell me how to run my business? And so I look at I look at someone like Jerry Jones and I say to myself, he's being rewarded every single week with with his bank account. So he thinks like I you're yeah. right. He looks up and there's like, "Hey, we've won the division two right. in the last three years." What's wrong? We're wildly profitable. I'm making hundreds but, of millions of dollars. But he knows the Super Bowl is what he needs. Yeah, but he only needs one another team Lombardi. Can win. And so he's, in his mind, as long as we make, no, yeah, you're well, right. No, yeah, no, I hear you. In his mind, he's thinking, yeah, I'm making money. I'm selling out the joint. Yeah. It's all good. And he's duping those fans over and over and over for high price tickets out there in Jerry's World. So there's another one. All right, there's another one. Let's hear it. Well, my job is to so ask why. Job, or I'll get another. I'll get somebody else to ask these questions, man. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> Jerry, we're just we're we're we're, we're trying to figure out why the no, team no, is. I'm not. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. You're not going to figure out it's uh, what the team is doing right or wrong. If you are, uh, or any five or ten like you, you need to come to this meeting I'm going to today. There are 32 <laughs> teams here. You're geniuses. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, okay. it, it, y'all really think you're going to sit here with a microphone and tell me uh, uh, all of the things that uh, I've done wrong and without going over the rights? Well, now, listen, we both know we're talking to a lot of great fans and a lot of great listeners. And I am very sorry for what happened out there Sunday. I'm sick about what happened Sunday. Now, I'm not talking to these guys who don't have this phone. I'm talking to you, the fans that are listening this morning. And we can spend a lot of time going over zigging and zagging. <laughs> One of the stupidest things I've ever done that anybody has ever analyzed is by the Cowboys. It was an idiot that did that. So idiot things can turn into good decisions. <laughs> okay? Smart things can turn into bad decisions. The facts are that when you make one, you don't really know whether it's going to be good or not at the time. So let's let's just uh, go ahead. I'm trying to answer your questions, man. You want some? You want some conversation this morning? You're getting it. <laughs> I mean, I'll find other hosts. I'll find other hosts, and he shut them down. Like, I don't know how to respond to that. What if Joe Lake okay, came goes? Skip, you guys are. We're gonna get somebody else to ask the questions. You guys will be gone in the morning. I will feel some type of way. Like damn. Well, your you, your you feel position threatened. would be different from mine because you have another job that requires the Warriors. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure how I would like to think that I would be like. Like for example, if I was in that room with the Cowboys, I'd be like, come on, Jerry, you're starting Zeke Elliott at running back. <laughs> Uh, they, like, like that's. It's, I don't think that that's that negative. Of like, look at your running back room, Dick Jerry. Come on, like, come on. He shut them down, man. I just kind of laugh, like, okay, whoa, this <laughs> is unbelievable. I mean, but the, I, I, the, that game, Detroit versus the Cowboys. So I called my grandfather on Sunday. I told this to Sam yesterday. I go, Grandpa, how you doing? You know, hey, LJ's birthday yeah. is going to be about a month away. Right. We, you know, we're going to do this holiday thing. You know, I'll pick you up for this. I'll pick you up for that. I go, what you doing right now? He's like, I'm, I turned off the red zone. I go, why? He's like, because I want to watch the entirety of this second half <laughs> of the Cowboys getting their butt kicked oh, against man. Detroit. He goes, do you see how many offensive linemen are getting passes? I, mean, I go, Grandpa, I'm watching it too. He goes, I'm enjoying every second of it. I mean, it. that was a statement. That was a statement by, by the Detroit Lions. Hook and ladders of Panay Sewell. Are you kidding me? They were doing whatever they wanted to do out there. It was unbelievable how the Detroit played. They were taking deep shots up 37-9. They didn't care. They didn't care. Detroit looked scary. Unfortunately, they had the injury with Aiden Hutchinson. But, boy, uh, Jerry Jones, man, not feeling good this morning.